Larry DeMarco is our guest here on the program because, doggone it, we need more Italians in the studio with me here. Larry, good morning to you. <laughs> good morning, Rob. You brought your dog, too. What's your dog's name? I did. That's Penelope. That's my that's my wingman. Penelope just had a good, good yawn there. Yes, she did. I think it's nap time. A little bit early. <laughs> She's staring at you like, hey, either give me a treat or get me outside. That's, uh, you know it. Bodwell looks at me like all the time like that. Too. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, used, used to that look. <laughs> right? Hey, uh, at least this time it's it's not like the uh, the sheriff's dogs that were in here the one time. Where the oh, dog God. was barking like crazy, standing right next to me. He kept <laughs> now, that was unnerving. <laughs> kept sniffing your pockets, Bodwell. Be careful. Uh-oh. Yes. Be careful. Uh, Larry, let's talk about the real estate market here in uh, Berkeley County and okay. the Eastern Panhandle in general. Interest rates for mortgages uh, a few months ago were uh, still on the rise. It seems like they've kind of steadied a little bit, haven't they? I think they're coming in around six, six and a half. It's it's not terrible. The increases, though, seem to be done, at least the, the well, larger yeah, ones. Yeah, uh, let's hope so. I mean, you and I both and probably everybody in this room remembers back in the day, so, um, you know, <laughs> oh, six yeah. and a half would have been... You know, it's just a blessing. Yeah, you yeah. Without a doubt. Time. Yeah, right. Right. And the effect that's had on the market, are you still selling a lot of homes in the eastern panhandle? You know, a combination of things have happened. Um, I was just looking at the stats this morning. Our inventory is actually up 39% from last year. Even though the market's very good at, you know, inventory's at historical lows, um, the market's still good. You know, it, mm-hmm. it, things are selling. It's just not selling like it was last year, which I was telling Jonathan or Matt, that's that's probably a good thing, because it was just insane last year. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's more of a yeah. normal market now, is that your well, saying? Well, no, not not quite normal, um, but we're getting there. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of factors that contribute to that. Builders are swinging hammers. There's more subdivisions that are, that are um, proposed or actually being developed right now. So the inventory is, is definitely greater, and the competition is different than what it was a year ago. Are people getting yeah. more than asking price now, or are they actually having to negotiate? No, uh, we're, we're starting to negotiate, yeah. So the buyer's having a little bit more control A little now, bit. It's becoming right? more traditional. That's right. Yeah. And in regards to home values in the eastern panhandle, are we holding steady on the rise or a decline? You know, I think in the past year it's gone up 5%, um, but I see it more leveling out. Yeah. Yeah. At 5%, and the average home price in the eastern panhandle is what, 300 thousand dollars yeah, right yeah so that's that's probably fair. fifteen thousand dollar increase sure. isn't too bad yeah it's not a bad return on investment not bad at all right no. especially if you got your money in the stock market right. these yeah. days yikes yeah all right so uh lair what are the what are the big developmental areas now in uh, the eastern panhandle oh, my. still um, north yeah yeah north definitely the falling water spring mills area mm-hmm. um you know i encourage you see so much on social media as far as you know panic about the proposed subdivisions and lack of infrastructure and why you know i try to stay neutral in that um you can't help to have a concern for the infrastructure and that's that's really the talk that's going on when you go up to um i live in falling water so as you drive through the area you you can see what's happening so there's there's a huge demand for northern berkeley county simply because of the proximity to maryland and and uh baltimore in that region a lot of those folks that work there commute out of state yeah yeah definitely so yeah. Uh, Johnny? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, you see the developments out toward Hedgesville, Route 9. I mean, if you look at infrastructure going all the way out there, it's already a nightmare at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 3.30. I mean, it's, it's a nightmare. The, do you see more development happening on the southern end? Because for a while there, there was talk. I mean, they were going to put the, the, the fifth high school, I guess, in on the southern That's end. Arden was always yeah. what they were mentioning. And then all of a sudden, it was it was the northern end. Do you see a lot of development or a lot of talk of development coming in, back into the southern end of the, the you county? Know, uh, to be honest, Jonathan, I haven't paid too much attention to that. Um, <clears throat> for the past 10, 15 years, South Berkeley has grown at such a um, – increased rate that I, i've just kind of lost focus on what's happening down there now you had yeah. said 39 39 uh percent um according to bright that's our our multi-list service between march of this year and march of last year the inventory has gone up 39 percent. so is the inventory at sort of are, are we getting near the historic average for inventory or are we still is the inventory oh, still no, under no. yeah we're we're stay, still way low Okay, that's yeah, what I thought. Yeah, so, I mean, it still, yeah. I mean, it still is a seller's market. You'd still consider it. Certainly is. Yes. How about the commercial side? How is commercial real estate? 
I mean, I know that there, there are big talks <clears throat> of a big commercial bubble around the country just yeah. because there are so many big companies as their leases end and stuff like that, they're not going to renew. There's right. not going to be as much off demand for office space. Are, do you think we're going to see a commercial real estate bubble around here? Probably not as much. You know, I really wish I could answer that. I do about 99% residential. Um, that's just one question I, I can't really get into. Hard pass yeah. on the commercial real estate. No, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I well, apologize for that. And we don't. I, and we yeah. we have more. We have more uh, retail. We don't have a lot of you know big office building stuff like that. That's right. Yeah. What do you see the biggest impediment is? to home buying at this point is it the fact that the the prices have risen so much because interest rates were so low and incomes have gone up or is it the interest rates what should people look for you know i I really think it just comes down to affordability um when you look at what the average earning is for a blue collar worker and and then look at either what they're paying in rent or what they're going to have to pay to purchase it's almost unattainable for a lot of people Mm. And that's kind of scary. I was driving down the interstate a couple of weeks ago, and I seen a sign, Macy's or, or some factory was advertising $25 an hour. And I thought, man, that's really good money. Then I did the math in my head in relationship to what a monthly payment or what rent would be. And I thought, man, you, you have to work three jobs at 25 bucks an hour. Well, and that, and that can cause, a, that can cause a, a downturn in housing prices because when the average family cannot afford the average house, We've got problems. Well, I, I I disagree with that. I think the wages are going to increase. I don't see a downturn in the market at all. It might level out, but I, I just think people have to step up and start paying their employees more. Mr. Hornby? Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Mr. Hornby, are you listening? <laughs> Considering I get paid zero. Mike, I want double. I want double zero. <laughs> Put a zero on the front and the back of that check this week, Johnny. Matt Miller. There's always a player on that Little League team that wears the double zeros. That, oh, yeah. You would look good in those. Jim Otto zero with zero the Raiders, Raiders back, back in the Jim 70s. Otto, yeah. So when you when you talk about in, in the inventory being low, give us an idea. What what should the inventory be? I mean, how many houses in, in a typical market would you like to see available based on the number of people that are looking there again that's matt that's a difficult question what i can tell you is last year if if a house came on the market you were probably getting 10 offers in the first day that's not a good position as you know for any buyer to be in um i would love to see you know buyers be able to look at six or eight homes and actually Mm -hmm. um relax and make a make a decision without being pressured into it because it's simple simple i mean you know when there's no inventory you tend to make mistakes in your decision making hmm. yeah just because you're rushed oh, i gotta make, God, gotta yeah. do this yeah if not somebody else is going to get it so yeah. what what would be a good time or what maybe is an average time like you just mentioned a year ago you put it on the market and a day later you've got so many offers you know How- if i'm reading this correct and it, it feels right um the average days on the market is only increased by 10 days but that tells you where we were at last year mm-hmm. i'm, I'm t- you know day one day three right you had a ratified contract so now basically they're they're saying it's taken about two weeks to get it under contract which is still low right i mean it would normally well, be upwards of a month oh, that's, maybe that's very low when i right. came into this in 95 the average time on the market was nine months nine yeah wow. and, and the theory was if you hold it long enough it will sell but nine months wow yeah yeah, that's amazing to think yeah. of when you look at this day and age. Are there houses selling more in specific price ranges, or, or are there even some price ranges that it's difficult to find homes? Uh, 300 and below, very difficult. Um, you know, and like a, the statement I made a few minutes ago, if you're making $25 an hour, you only qualify mm-hmm. for like up to 150 That's almost impossible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a thousand dollars a week, fifty two thousand a year if you're making twenty five an hour before overtime. I mean, I'm looking for a I'm looking for a six thousand square foot house on water. Um, I want like a two story, great room, a pool, everything else. Can you find me one for like two eighty? I mean, just between you and me. We could go to Boone County. We could. <laughs> I'm sure there's some waterfront down there. Become a teacher down there. Yeah. Apparently, that pays uh, pays better. It pays much better than it does up here. That's for based sure. on cost of living. Yeah. Sure. Larry Demarco is our guest here on the program from Modern Realty Results. Larry, have people adjusted to the interest rates currently with mortgages? Actually, I think they have for the most part. Yes. Yeah. How long did that take? Oh my! Here we go. All these difficult. It, it questions. chased people out of the market at first. Well, right? there there's some people that have not adjusted and they're sitting back. We we have a term. It's called date the rate. Um, you can always refinance. 
but you're never going to get that home for the same money you are today. So, you know, we encourage people to, to find a home. They can always refinance, assuming mm-hmm. that the rates go down. But for the most part, I'd, I'd say probably six, eight months, um, people were looking at the rates and they finally became convinced that, you know, it's probably not going to go too much lower than it's what it is. May 1, for, for May 2 being. now. So does does uh, that take us into the buying season over these next few months here? Certainly Spring, does. summer? Yes. Right? It certainly does. And what do, you, what do you recommend to people in regards to selling their home to make it look like it's a home worth buying? Or you know, do we not care still? We're just going to buy it because it's available. <laughs> no, I tell you, with the inventory increasing and the competition increasing, you know, you have to uh, – you have to clean it up, make it presentable, and, and very few people actually want to buy a home and, and bring a hammer and a saw in and start doing things, yeah. unless it's the investor. But if you sell to an investor, of course, you know, they're going to make the profit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, Larry, can you repeat what you said before? Because that was one of the most poignant things I've heard in a long time about real estate. What's that? About dating the rate. Dating the rate. People, <laughs> I mean, people don't think about that. I mean, there are a lot of people who think, okay, mortgage rates are higher, this and that. Mm-hmm. But the cost of houses is going to keep going up. If you get in now, even with a higher rate than you would have had a year ago, like you said, you can always, you can always refi it when they come down. That's, I mean, I think, I don't, I don't see enough stuff like that in in real estate agent advertising. I mean, that's that's beautiful. That makes so much sense, and yeah. people don't understand that. Well, and and historically speaking, you might have some lows as far as the increase in pricing, but typically speaking, and uh, home prices are always going to go up, but the rates do fluctuate, and you're not going to get anything less than what you are today as far as price that's my opinion unless you have a total collapse i think i mean i think you're right that happens well no no we definitely don't want that to happen but that that makes so much sense that i mean because people think and i i've been thinking about buying another property Mm -hmm. and i've been looking at the interest (laughs) rates and stuff and it would be commercial so it would be but you're you're exactly right get in buy it and then worry about you know refinancing it down the road hopefully right rates come back down that's right what are the uh, typical home price selling points right now, Larry, in the Eastern Panhandle? Um, townhouse, single family house. So you know, the townhouses. Life. There's, uh, my God, there's so many townhouses out yes, there. And more but every they're day. affordable. You know, when I was young, I mean, I started out in a mobile home on probably a rented lot. That's how most people my in my generation started out. But mm-hmm. in this day and age, it's it's townhouses. So that's a good starting point for most people. Um, and what are those selling for now? New, um, new, probably two fifty and above. Yeah. All right, yeah, ten year old townhouse, um, not too far behind that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe two and a quarter to two fifty. I mean, they're they're neck and neck. And single yeah. family homes, um, typical s- single family homes, say like a split four year and a quarter acre lot. Um, I call that maybe a starter home for most people. Mm-hmm. You're probably looking around the three hundred range. Three hundred, yeah. okay. Yeah. Is the townhouse basically the same as the starter house now? For, for a young um, couple? For most people, yes, because that's probably the most affordable way to get a roof over your head. Yes. That's, my first purchase was a townhouse. Okay. Montgomery County. Yeah. That was in 1988 for $102,000. I think it's worth 400 something now. Hmm. I don't own it any longer, by the way, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Right, you sold too soon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it went up twenty percent in four years, which I thought was pretty good for it for that time. Sure, right. Well, uh, yeah. But in regards to, uh, I know you're not the mortgage guy, but down payments and such. Are, is anybody doing twenty percent anymore? You know, that's that's kind of rare. Typically, uh, that's that's a conventional loan. That's for basically unique properties or, or uh, things such as that. Typically, you're, I think it's like 80%, 85% of the buyers fall into FHA, VA, or um, USDA, which FHA is 3.5% right. down, and then, then USDA is 100%, so it's VA. But 20%, you don't, you don't see as much as that as you do the other three. Unless you're selling a house that is appreciated pretty well to, oh, yeah. to get the next yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John? Well, I mean, I or Matt. Yeah. <clears throat> Matt, I just want to get into PMI insurance because mm-hmm. when you tell me that many people are are not you're, able to do paying. the eighty twenty, whoever does PMI insurance is raking it in because that that's an expense that gets added month by month, and oh, that's it, very, very it, it adds up over yeah. the course of time. So sure that, that's what we should be in. I'm sorry, Rob. I'm leaving right after this segment to uh, 
to, to start uh, reaching out to the SOS office and get my PMI insurance business in place. <laughs> you can get that removed once you get the appropriate amount of equity, but you've got to you initiate can. it. Right. Yeah, you have to initiate it. And, yeah. it, and depending on the percentage, it's going to take some, some years to, mm -hmm. to be able to, to get to that point. Which Maybe, depending on the appreciation the markets have, well, right? That's true. Do we see as much of the investment market right now you know when you tell me these prices of homes uh you know i think of all those tv shows of flip this house and all of those things that had so many people going wow i want to try that that doesn't sound to me like there's a lot of houses in that market range no not not like there was um it, there's a lot of people doing that and i'm glad because they're taking uh, like downtown martinsburg mm -hmm. you're seeing more happening in martinsburg than probably you ever did in the past 20 years as far as old homes being fixed up and, and sold right. so it, it has pushed the market into other areas that normally wouldn't sell as quick um the low inventory so investors are buying the, and my son and his business partner have done several of those mm -hmm. as well so it, it's improving the area that's how i see it Hey, let me come back to PMI. Uh, Rob made a great point on that that I think we mm -hmm. make, need to make sure our listeners understand is PMI, the, 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 the mortgage insurance that you pay mm -hmm. on, on, on FHA loans if you're under 20% equity, once you reach that, you can get rid of that PMI, that extra payment. But what Rob said was really poignant. You have to let them know. Because if you don't let them know, they will keep taking that money forever. <laughs> sure and there are probably yeah. you know, millions of homeowners out mm -hmm. there who are still paying PMI, especially with how precipitously the value of homes has risen. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's not necessarily how much you've paid or what your mortgage was originally. It's what the percentage of your equity is mm -hmm. to the overall uh price of the house so everyone every one of our listeners should take a look if you're yeah. paying pmi take a look at at what your home is valued at now you may be able to get rid of that payment and yeah. uh, you could probably you know call me then and get some more life insurance you know <laughs> smart marketing plan I like smart that. marketing plan i wound my way around to that pretty well how does this benefit me john Buck? That's right. <laughs> larry uh in yeah. regards to agency fees uh, i remember uh the last time i bought a home in 2020 it was a two, uh, sorry 2000 it was six percent is that still the the average agent fee you know we really don't talk too much about that what i will tell you is that um most most realtors it's it's flexible if if i know that a, a home is going to sell quickly uh, i'm probably more apt to negotiate my fee with you mm -hmm. yes less work on your part right that's right yeah. yeah but you don't get the entire fee that all gets split up between the the, the, the realtor it, the the agent and on both sides you know, you know there's a there's a price of doing business so yeah. um your typical agent splitting that with the broker there are some agents that are 100 percent, but they pay a fee to to get that 100 mm -hmm. percent. so you're exactly right the agent doesn't doesn't get all that well and you get what you pay for if you don't work with a local professional yeah. a realtor um and you're you know shopping around for the lowest price you get what you pay for and and you you can yeah. totally mess up a deal and and it can cost you tens of thousands of dollars if not more mm -hmm. if you don't have a professional that you're working with professionals get paid yeah. they need to they work hard they deserve it um, I mean, there are lots of low cost. I mean, you see these low cost things online. Oh, we'll sell your house for nothing. Okay, well, you sell my house for nothing. You won't do anything for me. You know, it's Jonathan, bad. we we could actually have an entire show about that subject alone. Uh, oh, I agree. You'd be surprised how many people I see that will sell their home themselves because of the market's so good. Everybody knows someone that wants to buy, but I can tell you personally, I've witnessed a lot of money being left on the table or mistakes being made that are very costly. Hmm. It happens all the time. Without yeah. a doubt, I mean that's yeah. why. Uh, I mean that's why I don't change my own oil because I have no idea how to do it. I'm not, <laughs> right. not going to get that little plug thing in right. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's and, and I mean I tell people that in my business. I mean it's there are some things you can do for yourself, but transactions like real estate. Yeah. I mean that is that for most people. I mean obviously that is the single largest purchase. I mean they may do it a few times, but that's the single largest mm -hmm. purchase in someone's life. I mean that that affects everything. You need a professional to guide you through it so you make sure you're doing things the right way. 100%. I mean, how many yeah. times do you see somebody, they, they, they go, they buy something, they don't deal with somebody, and then they go in and all of a sudden there are 20 problems with the property mm -hmm. that would have been uncovered well, by a professional. And, and you know, the thing is, how many homes have you sold last year? 
One, um, maybe one. Yeah, I, okay. I, I'm at zero. I was a part of probably 200 transactions. So you would think I would learn something within that 200. At least a little. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that could be considered valuable. Yes. Larry, there have been any uh, changes in the law regarding home sales federally or statewide uh, over the last couple of years that you have to be aware of? Not not really. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty much the same. Uh, you know, you have your your federal laws concerning lead based paint and things of that nature. But no, I don't I don't know of anything that's really impacted All differently. Right. Hey, uh, what are you expecting the rest of this year and into twenty four? Oh, I think it's, I think it's going to be a great year. It's just going to be different. That's all. And yeah. uh, if you had to estimate what the appreciation would be in the area, what do you think percentage wise? Um, I'm going to revert back to. 95 it, it was three percent a year and and that was average and i think we're falling into that yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. which with the current level of home prices is still a pretty good gain it year. is but it, if you notice some of the builders they've, they've come down on their pricing because yeah. they're, they're you know competitive and well there's a lot of factors on that i guess i read that there's, yeah. they're throwing in more incentives and mm-hmm. uh, and whatever yeah right? that's right are, are you seeing more purchase of new homes as opposed to existing homes through this time most definitely so okay. um like i said it took a while for the builders to kind of get in gear and start swinging hammers once again mm-hmm. and you'd be surprised what's what's going on as far as proposed subdivisions it's a little bit scary for berkeley county mm-hmm. because of the infrastructure but you know i encourage everybody to go online and and uh to the planning commission to see what's what's Can happening you share some of that with us now well um it's a lot of it is is just in the planning stages i mean um i'd rather not talk about it because it does create panic and i'm not the authority on that subject but it, there's a just go to the planning commission website and you can see what's what's being proposed we're well, talking about thousands of homes certainly yeah easy well it, it's scary because there um we don't have enough water in berkeley county for a lot of these new developments i mean water is a basic need and they're well, struggling to figure we, out how they're going to have water. Questions about this, and I don't think they can approve a new plan if there's not enough water. I, I believe that was all well. Part and of and there's studies together. being done. The thing about northern Berkeley County, are, the water comes from the Potomac River, so right. there's an endless supply of water. And I think that's another reason why you see so well, much that's, going on. And that's why the southern side is slowed up so much exactly. because they need another treatment plant down there. Yeah. Because they don't they don't have enough water. They have to pump I mean, the commercially, water they were talking the the development people were talking. We've we've lost a couple of major corporations that would have relocated along Route Nine, mm-hmm. um, but there wasn't there wasn't the water capacity capacity so i mean that and that's going back to infrastructure right. i mean we don't have we don't have enough roads we don't have i mean when i when i go out route nine i picture rockville pike mm-hmm. i mean it's it's bad sure and it's only going to get worse because i mean i don't know how many there are two three thousand houses slated for out route nine past hedgesville mm. or past hedgesville it. high school yeah Larry, how can people get in touch with you for more information about the things we discussed today? Um, our brokerage, Modern Realty Results, you can Google that or you can call uh, 262-4222. Um, but everything's internet-based and just remembers at Modern Realty. And, and we have a slew of agents out there that are very professional and knowledgeable. How many How many is a slew? A slew to me is 25. 25 uh, is a we're, slew? We're definitely not <laughs> a like slew. A gaggle of Rob, geese I and a slew of agents. Making, okay. <laughs> But uh, no, I mean, we're a small brokerage, but we take pride in what we do. So, yeah, if you need us, give us a shout. Larry, thank you for evening out the room. Two Italians to two non-Italians in the room. I call hey, that a hey, win. Hey, hey, hey. That's a win. My mother was Italian. Then Last you, name was Rosa Pep. Then you got a little in you as well. Miller, uh, you're on the outs. Yeah, Miller, I'm out. you. I'm out. <laughs> and you got here late. <laughs>